The property investment world is full of people with very strong opinions, but a lot of those opinions turn out on closer scrutiny not to be true. So today we're here to bust some more property myths for you. Let's get straight into it, Rob. What is the first one? Number one, you can get started in property without any money. If that's the case, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, probably because it's not true. Technically, there are some techniques that you may be able to get in with low money. Not no money, but low money in. However, these techniques are so advanced that they simply aren't suited to beginners. The financial disciplines you gain by building a deposit up and learning to save and getting that money together or creating wealth to then go and invest is valuable. So trying to shortcut it by not learning those lessons, trying those techniques out, and then jumping into something super advanced property investment wise, which requires a lot of expertise, is not the way forward. Also require a lot of time. And time is money. Time is our greatest resource. And you have to invest a lot of it to execute these strategies and these plans. So they are not free. They are not simple to do. And they will take a lot of time to implement. So quite simply, getting started in property without any money is a lie. It is. Myth number two. My mortgage has got more expensive. I'll just increase the rent to compensate. Or you could substitute in, oh, um, I've now got to pay for a license for my local authority. I'll, I'll increase the rent to compensate. I just do not think that is true. Rents are set by the market. You can't just raise rents because you feel like it. And it bugs me because every time there's a new charge or fee that is imposed on landlords, all the kind of special interest groups like the NLA and whoever will come out and say, oh, well, it's tenants who are really going to suffer because they're just going to have to pay more. No, I don't think they are. I mean, it, it, it just comes off as kind of making it sound like you care about the tenants when really you're just a bit annoyed that you have to spend more money. And none of us want to spend more money, but let's not pretend that landlords are a perfect cartel. It's an incredibly fragmented market and you can't just put up rents to whatever the heck you feel like. It might be the case that you just buy whatever property you like the look of and you think, oh, well, I'll charge this amount of rent because that's what I need to make a profit. But you need to approach it from the other way around. See what the market rent is and work back from there to find out how much you can afford to pay for it in the first place. If you believe the myth, then it can take you in completely the wrong direction and mean that you don't do the really important research that you need to do before you buy a property. One myth we hear bounded about a lot and it's used time and time again is property doubles every 10 years. Not true. Property on average in the UK has doubled every nine years, according to the Nationwide Price Index. Now, that is not to say your property price will double every nine years. So why? Well, because areas outperform other areas. Some areas will do very well at one part of the cycle, others not so well, and then other areas will really kick on. You can get areas which are just really poor performers. And if you've based your whole portfolio in one area and you're unlucky and that area is just a bit of a poor performer this time round, then you're in trouble. Does property double every 10 years? No. The average is nine, but depending on where you invest, it may be different. So to get closest to the average as possible, invest in different areas. Okay, myth number four. The perfect investment is out there if you spend enough time searching for it. There is no such thing as the perfect investment. You always need to compromise on something. And that's why knowing your priorities are really, really important because there is no absolutely amazing investment that is going to do everything for you. Some types of investment create really great cash flow. Some have potential for great capital growth. There's plenty of mixes in between. There are some which are going to let out really, really easily. There are others which might be a little more challenging, but there are upsides which make it worth it. There are so many different factors and you need to know what matters to you because you'll never find anything that ticks every single box. I find that a lot of investors I meet come out with this next myth. And the myth is that, well, London property prices always go up and property prices in London always outperform other areas. Both not true. So London prices always go up. Let's take that as the first one. Well, first of all, after the 08 crash, London property prices did fall, but this one will probably amaze most people. So London prices fell the hardest and the fastest than any other 
region. Now you might be going, well, it can't be possible. Look at London property prices now. What happened was then London property prices recovered at a faster pace than any other region afterwards. But they did fall. And there are other areas, Manchester we've talked about, but others too, that are now not only matching London, but in some cases outperforming London. You will hear this because people have made money on London property. But just because somewhere has done the best now doesn't mean it's going to continue. So there you go. That's five property investment myths uncovered. And also we have our previous five myths which are still very much out there you still hear these they are still every bit as false as ever so if you want to get the link to that episode just go to the show notes so there you have it but before you go make sure you subscribe or if you're a kino when it comes to property check out the property podcast one of the uk's most popular business podcasts